This is MathGuide.com. My name is Mark Karadimos. Today we're going to talk about how to graph systems of inequalities. So you'll notice that I do have a system of inequalities right here to begin with. I've got the system right here. And I will be graphing it on a coordinate plane. So I have a coordinate plane all drawn out here. All right, so we're ready to begin. Now, when we graph inequalities, these are two linear inequalities. Uh, there are different methods that you could use to graph. So I'm going to use two different methods. So for the first line, uh, I am going to, it's a shaded line, but uh, I am going to graph it, and I'm going to use a very shrunken t-table. So this t-table is going to be very small. I'm going to put in 0 for x and solve for y. So I want you to imagine me putting in 0 right here. So I'm going to put 0 in for x. So remember, this is 6 times 0. So I'm going to get, right, 6 times 0, I'm going to get 0, right? 0 is for this whole term. So this term is going to basically drop out. All I'm going to be left with is this minus y and the 1 on the right. Okay, so I'm going to get minus y and I'm going to get a 1 on the right. And for the purpose of me graphing the line, I'm only going to be concerned with the equality for now. We'll deal with the inequality in a moment. So to graph this, I need to continue solving this. So I need to solve this equation. So we know how to solve this. right? We're going to divide both sides by a negative 1. And we're going to get y equals negative 1. All right, so that's what I get y equals negative 1, so I put negative 1 into the table. So there's my first ordered pair. 0, negative 1 is a point on this line. All right, likewise, I need another point, right? I need two points to graph the line. So I'm going to try with 0 here. So I'm going to put 0 in for y. So imagine actually physically putting in a 0 right in here for y. I'm going to get 6x minus nothing. So 6x minus nothing is just 6x. And I'm going to have that 1 still on the right side. And I'm going to keep an equal sign there, and I'll deal with the inequality and the shading in a moment. Solving this, we divide by 6. So we're going to get x equals 1 sixth. Now you could leave that as a 1 sixth, or you could use that as a decimal approximation. Uh, you could do that, so I'm getting a 1 sixth. So I will put 1 6 there. Or that's very close to 0 0.2. 0 0.2. All right. So now we're going to graph this. All right. We're going to graph this information. So I'm going to go over here to the right side and begin graphing these points. So to graph this first point, 0, negative 1, 0, negative 1 is right here. All right, and we're going to have to graph the other one, which is going to be 0 0.20, 0 0.20. So it's going to be just over here, just to the right of the origin. Now this little table, eh, it's actually not, it should be further left, but not at the origin. Uh, you know, this method of graphing these two points, if you haven't already noticed, these are intercepts. Here's our x-intercept because it crosses the x-axis there. Here's the y-intercept that crosses the y-intercept there. So it's a graphing by intercepts. All right, now going back over here, we'll notice that we have a, an equal sign. So when it comes time to graphing the line, equality indicates that we should create a solid line. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to graph a solid line going through those two points trying to make sure I really get a nice line here, a nice long line. And there's my line. All right. So now when we graph this line, we have to determine which, which side of the line should we shade. We have shading any time that we have an inequality. That's why I'm concerned with this. I'm trying to figure out, should I shade above the line, above left of the line, or the bottom right of the line? Now, to do this, to determine which side you're going to shade, you use a test value. I'm always going to use the origin if I can, but you use a point that's not on the line. So I'm going to test. Is this the side that I'm supposed to shade? Well, I'm going to test that point which is on that side. 
So that point is 0, 0, right? That test point is 0, 0. So I'm going to put in a 0 for x. So I actually physically picture putting me or putting the value 0 here and a 0 here. If we do that, we actually put in the zeros there, we're going to get 0 minus 0 is less than or equal to 1. And we know that nothing minus nothing is nothing. All right, now when we're left with this numerical statement, we decide, is this true or false? Zero is certainly less than or equal to one, so it's true. All right, that means that that is the correct side to shade. I will be shading to that side. So uh, what I want to do without actually shading yet, I want to indicate that that's the side to shade. So I put these little arrows, and I'm going to indicate that, yep, I better shade above left. And I indicate that by putting little arrows there. Don't shade yet, because we've got a whole other line to go. All right, so we'll keep that in mind. Now we're going to graph the next line. So the next line, we could use this uh, method of intercepts. But instead, I'd like to use a different method. I'm going to graph this by first solving for y. All right, so here is the equation, or I'm sorry, the inequality. And I'm only going to deal with the equality because I'm only concerned with the line for the moment. So to do this, you, to actually to graph this by the method I'm trying to use here, you get y alone. That's what I'm doing, is I'm doing some algebra that allows me to get the y alone, to isolate the y value. So you subtract 2x to get rid of this term, getting the, rid of the term on the left side, and I have a minus 2x, and I have a positive 9 on the right side. Okay, next we want to get rid of the 3. So since we're multiplying y by 3, we divide by 3. So we end up dividing everything by 3. So if we do that, we have negative 2 divided by 3. Oh yeah, by the way, the 3's cancel here. You've probably been able to see that. But negative 2, we've got to divide that by 3. 9, we've got to divide by 3. Dividing everything by 3. All right, so this first fraction, we could leave just the way it is. Here, 9 divided by 3 is 3. All right, so we've got our new line. And we're going to graph it. We are going to graph this line. And keep in mind that we don't have any equality here. There's no equality. I just used the equal sign just to figure out where the line is. But our original problem has no equal sign. So keep that in mind. Okay? So when we keep that in mind, we're going to graph this. And if we're going to graph this, we start with our y-intercept, right? That's our y-intercept. So we start on the y-axis at 3. And, you know, I should be putting an open circle here because I don't have any equal sign. Just like on a number line, no equal sign means open circle. And then we're going to use the slope from here. So the slope says we go from the y-intercept down to, right, our slope is rise over run. So we actually we go down to 1, 2, and we go to the right 3, 1, 2, 3. Now, I'm going through this fairly quickly, but we do have other videos that explain how to graph. Please feel free to access those. All right, now uh, we have open circles. This means we don't have the line. So I'm doing a very horrible job here of making the dashed line. I'm working diagonal with a pen. But we get the idea. It's kind of nice to do these by hand because this is what students do, uh, you know, that it, these problems always look slightly inaccurate because we are doing it by hand. It's, it's normal to have a little bit of waviness. It's not perfect. All right, we've got our line and it's dashed because of no equal sign. Again, we're going to have to determine which side of the line to shade. So we use a test point. Now imagine us using some point off the line and I always try to use the origin and I'm going to use the origin again. So in other words, I'm testing. Will the below left portion of this line be the side that I'm supposed to shade. Well, imagine putting in 0 for x and putting in 0 for y. So you get 2 times 0 is 0, you get 3 times 0 is 0, 
and you can see that that whole side turns out to be zero. You can see that fairly quickly. And again, we decide, is this numerical statement true or false? Is zero less than nine? Yep, it's true. Turns out that my test point happened to work both times. So that means I'm supposed to shade on the side that works. And the below left side is to the side that works for this dashed line. So that's where I'm going to shade. I'm not going to shade it, actually. I'm just going to indicate with arrows what direction I should be shading. So I should be shading below. All right. Um, those lines aren't, those little arrows aren't coming out so well, so I'm going to make them a little darker. Uh, it kind of helps for contrast. So these arrows are going to help us determine where to shade. Because you're supposed to shade all the points that satisfy both of these lines, both of these inequalities. And you'll notice that this plane has now been divided into four sections. You have this section, which I'll call section 1, over here. You have section 2, right over here, this section. you got section 3, down here, and you got section 4. We're trying to figure out which of these four sections should we shade. Well, the arrows give it away. Now, I'm not going to shade over, over here in section 2. I have no arrows pointing to section 2. Do not shade over here. If you look at section 1, we only have one arrow pointing here. Nope, it's not enough. I need two arrows pointing here. Same thing with section 3. I only have one arrow pointing to section 3. Don't shade here. Now, section 4 is the right area to shade because I have two uh, arrows pointing this direction. So that means I'm going to shade that section. So that means the solution is this section that's between the lines. All of this. I'm doing a horrible job here of shading. Uh, but all of this section that's between the two lines. In other words, every point in this section is the solution space. Any point I were to choose would satisfy both of these uh, inequalities at the same time. So all of these points are the solution to this system of inequalities. All right, so that's the method you use. I try to use different methods here for graphing, but again, I do have these videos online at mathguide.com. I also have uh, many lessons. I have interactive quizzes as well. So feel free to enjoy them. Have a great day.